All right, mic check, mic check. Yo, what up? It's your boy Atreus, man. I had to come and drop this video real quick. I ain't even gonna do no intro like that, man. We gotta get into this video right here, man. Matt Walsh dropped a hit piece on a red pillar today. And not just one, you know, he talks about Pearl, but he talks about a lot. But the most important thing is here is he's talking about marriage. And um, I thought that this video, like, I ain't gonna lie, I watched the first six minutes of it, and um I ain't gonna lie, he kinda he kinda struck my nerve. I got something in my what hell is this? Some lint or something in my head. Yeah, he kinda struck my nerve a little bit. And I gotta say, you know, uh I, I am a fan of I am a fan of my boy Matt Walsh. But sometimes, man, Matt Walsh be having me feeling like, bro, what are you talking about? So we're gonna get into this video. I don't know if y'all seen it yet. It's a relatively new video, but we're gonna put the headphones on and, and we're gonna talk about it. This might be this might be a lengthy one. You feel me? Yeah, this might be a lengthy one. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's see what Matt Walsh got to say, man. Of marriage. And I defend it because it's the bedrock of civil. Oh. Okay, let's go ahead. I've spent a lot of time in my career defending the institution of marriage, and I defend it because it's the bedrock of civilization, so it deserves defending, and I defend it because it's under constant attack, so it needs defending. And one of the most troubling developments in recent years, which we've discussed on the show in the past, is that these attacks are increasingly waged not just from the left, but from certain noisy segments of the right as well. Some right-wing influencers with legions of young, mostly male fans have decided that men should abandon marriage and family life and uh, go their own way. And these these influencers, many of whom consider themselves a part of the so-called... First of all, that's cap number one. That's cap. Nobody said abandon marriage. And you're going. this is going to be a theme throughout this video. Nobody said ab abandon marriage and ab abandon family life at all. What, what the message has always been is that until the laws are changed, you should not get into a legal marriage with anyone, especially if you don't have a prenup in place. Even for even if you ain't even making that type of money like that, but let's go ahead and let's let's continue. Red pill movement pretend to despise feminists and yet have essentially arrived at the same conclusion as feminists, which is that we should give up on the family. Uh, that's 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 cap number two. Ain't nobody said give up on family. As a matter of fact, if you watch most red pill, you know, centered uh, channels or shows or whatever it is. The first thing they say is to get back to where we supposed to be as a society, we need to prioritize families. So he just pulled that. I'm sorry, Mr. Walsh. Again, I'm a big fan. I've been a fan since I watched your documentary, What is a Woman? But you just pulled that out of your ass. You just pulled that completely out of your ass. So you losing points already. Let's go. The two sides hate marriage almost as much as they hate each other. Now, one of these influencers is again, a woman named Carol Davis, who has garnered a relatively large following on YouTube and various social media platforms. Uh, she's in her mid-20s, single and childless, and uh, yet full of opinions about modern marriage and family life, a subject that she has no personal insight into whatsoever. She spent the past few days on the internet complaining about quote-unquote trad cons like myself, who, she says, promote the nuclear family despite not understanding what it's really like. Yes, we men who actually have wives and children don't know what it's like to be married, but a woman who is not married and has no children does know what it's like. In one of her tweets, she wrote, quote, the trad cons push marriage because they aren't. Okay, so here's here's what I, so remember I always tell y'all about feminine warfare, and I tell you those, those weirdos on the left do it all the damn time, even though I'm pointing to the right, the weirdos on the left. The weirdo, we, we talk about feminine warfare, that's the manipulation and mi the, mim uh, the manipulation <laughs> of words and their meaning in order to paint a specific narrative about you. And that includes misrepresenting what somebody said. He said that that Pearl is opposing trad cons pushing the nuclear family. That is not what she said in this tweet. It's not even close to what she said in this tweet. She said the trad cons push marriage. And he's operating as if you absolutely have to be married in order to be considered the nuclear family. Now, you can argue back and forth about that if you want to. Cool. But that is not what she said. And also, you can be married without getting the government involved. So, like, all due respect, Mr. Walsh, 
once again, you pulling a whole new narrative out of your ass and I can see right through it. It's called feminine warfare. You're engaging in the very thing that you accuse the left of engaging in, which is having words that don't mean things. I mean, that, that, that having words that don't mean what the person used it for and you're misrepresenting what she said. She did not say anything about, oh, they're pushing the nuclear family. She said they're pushing marriage. So let's get, let's get back into it. Aren't old enough to know better. They don't know the reality of what they're pushing. This is accompanied by a picture of myself, Ben Shapiro, and Michael Knowles. We aren't old enough to know better and don't know the reality of what we're pushing, yet a woman who is younger than us and single does know better and does understand this reality. No, I got to agree with him on that. I don't know what the hell Pearl was talking about when she said that. They're not old enough to know better. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Another post, she uh, goes on to say that marriage is a terrible deal for men. And she later explains- And it is. Quote, would you ever sign a contract that fails 75% of the time where your business partner is paid to break the contract? Why would you encourage men to sign that contract until the terms are fixed? Now, you may be surprised to learn that marriages fail at a rate of 75%. The figure that people like this normally use is 50%. And the claim that 50% of marriages end in divorce is already spurious, and we'll have more on that in a moment, but 75%? I was wondering where that number came from, so I scrolled down and I saw something that she reposted from an alleged lawyer who said this, quote, it's not 50-50, that only accounts for divorces. Another 25% on the negative side for miserable men trapped in cheaper to keep her marriages unwilling to risk financial destruction and loss of their children. 75% so, chance of a devastatingly bad outcome. So, you know, I won't, I won't go as far as to say he's misrepresenting what she said here. They use 75%. So basically what, you know, they're saying is, and, and you got to do the math, it's, it's a guesstimation. Um, marriage, there's a, marriage is divorces and marriages is close to 60% now. Like it's not just 50%. It's like close to 60%. And what they're basically doing here is they're guesstimating the amount of men who are in marriages miserable as hell, but don't want to get a divorce because again, it's cheaper to keep her. So like, that's what they're doing here. So I know Matt Walsh is trying to make it seem like they made this up. They pulled it out of their ass, but you know, that's what they're saying. So let's keep going. Outcome is just a bad plan. No sane person would enter into a commercial contract on such terms. Now, I did ask him where he got this 75% figure from, and uh, he wouldn't say. Apparently, the magic statistic fairy came and whispered it in his ear. Now, for her part, it's Pearl not a real statistic. See, I, I, this is the thing that gets on my nerve. He, I, and I feel like he knows this. Uh, again, I like Matt Walsh. I'm, I, I'm not, I, w I would never go as far as to say I'm a, I'm a big fan of anybody. I'm not a fan of anybody. I'm a supporter of his work. But you, right now, I feel like Matt Walsh acting like a bozo. 75% 70, is obviously not a real number. It's a, it's a guesstimation of the, the number of 50%, because we'll go with 50%. I say it's close to 60% divorce rate. A guesstimation of the 50% divorce rate. And then the number of, of people that are still married, the men who are still married, who are stuck who are stuck in cheaper to keeper marriages that's what it is but you're sitting here trying to act like he was trying to represent that as a real number you know damn well he wasn't trying to represent that as uh, as a real number but to pander to your you know extremely right fan base who believes it's either marriage or go to hell marriage or go to hell then you have to represent it that way so you know with his uh, wife of 20 years and she questioned whether the marriage counts as successful since Brosnan wife, Brosnan's wife has put on some weight at the age of 60. So apparently, even if they're happy and have remained married for two decades, they still might fall into that 75% failure rate because they have Yeah, I don't know what she was doing. I mean, Pearl can be a little bit extreme herself. So, I mean, hey. Not both remained in supermodel condition into their 60s. This debate on social media brought out the rest of the marriage skeptical crowd on the right. A bunch of these uh, red pill influencers decided to hop on uh, an emergency Zoom call and spend two hours talking about me and the rest of the Daily Wire crew and our reckless promotion of society's most fundamental institution. Now, there's there's one clip here that you should see. This is um, uh, apparently a, a, divor a divorce lawyer who says that the failure rate for marriage is not 50 percent and it's not 75 percent. It is, in fact, even higher. Listen. I think marriage can be successful, of course. It's just not something that's as scalable as we as a society are trying to pretend it is. Marriage is, and I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it a hundred more, marriage is like the lottery. You are probably not going to win, okay? You're probably not going to win. Don't make that your 401k. You're probably <laughs> not going to win. But if you win, what you win is so great that 
I don't blame you for buying a ticket and trying. I personally don't buy lottery tickets. But when somebody says, yeah, I played a lottery, hey, man, somebody's got to win. And you know what? As long as you're not blowing money that you need for food or to put shoes on your kids' feet, you're not hurting anybody. Go out, give it a try. So I always tell people, listen, marriage, when it works, when you have somebody who's married 20 plus years, they're still crazy about each other, that is the exception, not the rule. But That's when you do it, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So why not buy the ticket, take the ride, but have a prenup? Wear a seatbelt, guys. I agree with that. Right? I, you know, I, I agree with that. So, you know, I don't see the problem there. Me personally. You can be a safe driver, but wear a seatbelt. So a happy marriage, he says, is like winning a lottery. And the thing about the lottery is that almost everybody loses. This is a perfect summation of how this entire club views marriage and the message that they're uh, uh, sending to young men in particular. Sure, it can be great, they concede, but only if you're insanely lucky. Everybody else is screwed. This is, this is a rather bleak view of marriage, and thankfully, it's also nonsense. First of all, the claim that marriage isn't scalable is obviously ridiculous because marriage has served as the bedrock of human society since time immemorial. It has already happened at the scale of civilization for thousands of years. But we, but no. we ain't in those times no more. Like, see, this is the thing that killed me about trad cons, bro. Like, y'all, y'all, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, we're not, we're not in the 1920s no more, dog. You stupid. Like, what, what, like, like, listen, I understand maybe where you're from, all the women are still virgins at the age of 21 and they're sitting there waiting to get married. And, you know, they go to church every day and they wear the best outfit, the most, you know, sexiest, but like less revealing outfits. If that's where you grew up, sir, congratulations. I, I, Congratulations to you, but the rest of us ain't grew up that way, dog. I'm just keeping it being with you. We out here, we seeing what's going on. It ain't adding up. And I know y'all like to, like, you know, we saw the debate with Fresh and Fit uh, and the dude that was on uh, Tim Cast and all of that. And y'all keep saying, you know, go to a small town. Dude, if we all decided to go to small towns, guess what? It wouldn't be a small town anymore. And then you'd be mad as shit about you be singing, try that in a small town. When we pull up trying to get with the with the traditional, like, cut it out, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, what are we talking about here? Let's get back into it. Divorce lawyers come along and say that, you know, this thing that, that society has been doing forever. Turns out it doesn't work. Because it because in the context of 2023, Mr. Walsh, it don't work. Like, I'm just like, God, like, what is he like? What is he talking about? It doesn't work. Guess what? For those thousands of years, they didn't have Instagram. They didn't have Tinder. You know what I mean? Everybody didn't have cars. Back in the day, when you came out, when you came out your door, you was you was restricted to the confines of the people in your city, in your town, in your neighborhood. Now, on both sides, you got access to people all over the world. Women ain't trying to settle down with just one situation. They're trying to get their best situation, dog. And you sitting here acting like, oh, no, you know, it's cool. Get married. Come on, bro. You going to mess around and get married and you fart one day in the bedroom and divorce papers. <laughs> you burp the wrong way while she on her period. Divorce papers. And it's fact. It's absolute facts. I follow way more uh, uh, lawyers of all different kinds. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm like, I'm, like, why are you talking to us like we stupid? Like, we can't see what's going on out here. We see what's going on out here. I can, if we ain't getting the information from you, we're going to get the information from a source. Every, every single divorce lawyer I've ever heard from, or just lawyer, period, whether they white, black, man, woman, Hispanic, whatever the case may be, they all say the same thing. Are oh, you finna get married? Hey, make sure you get that prenup. I wouldn't do it. Make sure you do this with your funds. Make sure you do it, do that. Make sure you don't do this. Make sure she's this. Make sure you look at her background. Make sure you look at his background. Make sure you do a background check. Why? Because these are people that have gotten rich off of the divorce rate. Cut it out. Let me continue. I'm, I'm, I'm about to blow a gasket. Unless you're the one in a million. It's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous claim. By the way, at this point, at this point, uh, this is where I stopped before I started uh, making the video, y'all. So let's get it. 
Now, what about the failure rate of marriages in our culture? We've heard 50%, we've heard 75%. We just heard that they, they fail at a rate similar to the rate that people lose the lottery, which would mean higher than 99%, a lot higher. Once again, misrep... This dude, bro. Once again, you're misrepresenting what was said. It's obvious that what they were saying was a great exaggeration. Nobody's comparing the, the divorce rate to the goddamn lottery. Not, like, not on literal terms. Basically what he's saying, if you're lucky enough to get with a woman who values being together for a long time, doesn't value going out on trips with her friends, doesn't value putting herself in situations that might compromise the relationship, then it's an awesome thing. But the simple fact of the matter is, in our society right now, if you get married, there's a high likelihood, especially if you're from my community, that you're going to get divorced. There's a, and I know where I got the 60% from. It's 50% in America overall, and in the black community, it's 60%. So, yeah, I want to correct that from earlier. It's 60% of you black. So, yeah, if you get black, I'm, if you get married, <laughs> I said if you get black. You're stupid. <laughs> if you get married as a black person to another black person, there's a 60% chance of getting married, I'm, uh, of getting divorced. Once again. You're stupid. Uh, so let's continue. Um, yet, these kinds of astronomical odds are not based in anything but the doom and gloom speculations of the people inventing them. It's, it's there is not... no evidence that having a happy marriage is as unlikely as winning the lottery, or that 75% of Bro, why? Bro, you would... I hate when people do this. You know damn... Man, let me continue, man. Marriages end in misery. And what about the 50% number? Well, this is at least is a, is a familiar statistic. It's, it's something that you've probably heard before. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Um, it's familiar, but it is bogus. And one way you, that you know that it's bogus is that people have been claiming that 50% of marriages end in divorce since I was a kid. I've been hearing that my whole life. And that would mean that divorce rates are static across time. But of course, that isn't the case. In fact, we know that divorce rates have gone down in recent years. So, so okay, so this is, so this tactic is what people do when they try to mix a little bit of truth with an, some over-exaggerated bullshit and try to act like they're actually saying something. First of all, there's no, the divorce rate. The divorce rate has been on a decline for the last fifty years. Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh is like what forty six, forty seven, something like that. So yeah, when you was a kid, the the divorce rate started to climb at an alarming rate. Now, some of the truth of what he said is divorce rates have been declining. So. So what I meant to say was divorce rates have been going up since he was a kid, but in recent years, they have been declining. But a lot of that has to do with inflation, people realizing, hey, rent getting high. I know a chick right now who's in a relationship with a baby daddy she don't want to be with, but rent getting too high. And so she 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 making some sacrifices right now. She tell me all the time, I'm trying to save up some money to get away from this nigga. And I'm like, okay, I mean, you know, you do what you do. But um, rent just every, every time she says she's saving up, another year go by, another $100 the rent go up. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep going. So where does the 50% figure come from? Apparently, it's a, it's a holdover from the 1980s, which is when people first started citing that statistic. It's not true today. And it's actually not clear that it was true even in the, in the 80s either. So what is the actual divorce rate? Um, it's a little bit hard to determine. Probably oh. our best guess is based on U.S. Census data, which according to the most recent figures, says that about 35% of American adults who have been married have been divorced. So it's not exactly going to give us a precisely scientific figure of what the... So, so, every, so basically every lawyer on the internet is a liar. Based on what... Because what I thought he was going to do, I thought he was going to give us an actual statistic of what was, gonna, what was actually happening. Because if you put up a statistic, okay, I might have to be quiet a little bit. I might have to. All right, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and research this and see if Matt, you ain't give up. You ain't give up. You ain't give us nothing. How are you gonna debunk what you claim to be speculation by giving us more speculation? Man. Man, come on, man. How are you gonna debunk? Speculation, what you what you are is assuming is speculation, and give us more speculation. Like, come on, bro. But you're supposed to be the logical. You're supposed to be so much smarter and so much more 
in in reality than than the left hearts apparently not divorce rate is but it's it's as close as we're gonna get 35 percent and 35 percent is high i mean it's way too high it's not 50 percent though and it's not 75 percent and it's not 99 percent and it's definitely not lottery odds still isn't it terrifying to think that if you get married your chance of failure is 35 percent and the chance of success is only 65 percent at the most you know, even if we go with that number, isn't that still very, very scary? Isn't it high enough that it should dissuade anyone from attempting it? The answer to that question is no, and here's why. If the divorce rate is 35%, or even if it's 50%, it does not follow that your own particular marriage has a 35 or 50% chance of failure. Man, get the now, fuck out of here. He, you might as well, he might as well have said, no, the, the universe, the universe is going to protect my marriage. Come on, Matt. You stupid. Come on, Matt. You better than this. You better than this. Hey, man, you can get married, but there's a 35% chance she's going to divorce you, take half everything you got, take the kids, and put you on child support. Nope. Stupid. I'm not going to let you get the chance. Nope. <laughs> No, you got me messed up. You with somebody thinking you in love whole time? She she belongs to the streets. Man, come on, bro. Matt, really? This is what we doing? I'm not saying that you should be cocky or reckless, or that you should see yourself as invincible. I am saying that you shouldn't, on the other extreme, see yourself as passive debris floating helplessly on the tide of statistical likelihoods, because you are an individual. Your marriage is an individual thing and its chances of failure are not set by society at large. So here's an example to illustrate what I mean. And this is really, really important to understand because, because as marriage rates fall, and those are falling, um, you know, the, the thing that-, that I, I've heard enough, Matt. I'm sorry, you lost me. I thought you was gonna bring us, I thought you was gonna bring us something interesting, maybe some new statistics that debunk everything we've been hearing, but you failed. You, you out of here, you out of here, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, and your video is gonna get ratioed. As it gets more views, it's gonna get ratioed. It's already like it's already got a high dislike right now. Uh, I mean, if you if you look like like uh, I think there needs to be accountability for accountability for ruining marriage. There should be no fault divorces. And if someone cheated, they, then they don't get the kids. Exactly. Uh, I'm a devout Christian and believe in marriage. I can hold two ideas in my head at the same time. Exactly. Marriage is a good thing, a gift from God and a bedrock of society. But I also live in a current modern society where almost every aspect of marriage has been torn down. Thank you, sir. Imagine being a divorce lawyer and making a living out of broken families. I mean, exactly. E exactly. <laughs> exactly. Our divorce courts need major reform, the way alimony is decided, and the amounts has uh, gone completely off the deep end. So the people in his comments, are, I mean, they're not necessarily roasting him, but they debunking the shit that he's saying. And... It only took me one Google search, sir. And we can do some more research here because I don't want to be like one of those guys that click on the first. Divorce rates in the United States have been steadily declining over the past few decades. We've said that. We've said that. I, I, I've agreed to that. Divorce rates have been declining. But like I said, there's multiple reasons for that. If you ain't really out here making bank, I mean, rent is not getting cheaper, dog. It's not getting cheaper. But unfortunately, the divorce rate is still higher than it was in the early 1970s mr walsh ain't even ain't even uh 50 years old yet and he talking about i've been hearing that statistic since i was a kid yeah nigga that's when he started come on bro according to the american psychological association approximately 40 to 50 percent of first marriages end in divorce the divorce rate for second marriages is even higher with an approximately 60 to 67% of second marriages ending in the ending in divorce. What percentage of marriages end in divorce? According to America, oh yeah, yeah, we've already read that part. How many marriages end in divorce? According to the US Census Bureau, there were 2,245,404 marriages in 2019 and 800, 827,000. 827,261 divorces, which means approximately 37% of marriages end in divorce. 
Now, that's closer to the number he gave us. But he was speculating. So if we did it over a span of the last 10 years, it's going to be a little bit less than 50. But that's one Google search. They go to census. Is your state in step with national marriage and divorce trends? Do, 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 do. Let's see, both marriage and divorce rate. Let me see. Let me see if I can find this. this is a big ass article, so I don't know if I want to be. You know what I'm saying? According to the data, marriage. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 2021 divorce. I'd have to. I'd have to look. I have to. Uh. I'd have to do some deep diving into that one because I have to interpret that the right way. I don't want to get. I don't want to misrepresent. I don't want to misrepresent anything. Hmm. Divorce and marriage rates by year. 6.9, what that mean? I don't know. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to come back with these statistics and, and interpret them the right way because I don't want to misrepresent anything. But I mean it it don't take that long to debunk everything he's talking about. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up, bro. Like Matt Walsh out of his goddamn mind. But you know, it is what it is. That's trad cons for you. So y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Um, what do you think about marriage? Is, is Matt Walsh right? Does he have a point? Uh, are you on his side? Uh, what do you think? Just let me know. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, man, and, and, and you know follow me on Twitter and Instagram, all right? At Atreyes on everything. Atreyes underscore Max on Twitter. Uh, at Atreyes on Twitter. I'm mean, on uh, Instagram. And, you know, follow me at Atreyes on Kick as well. Hey, we're going to be back to normal. Um, I'm hoping to move into the new place on the 1st of October. And we're gonna be, we're gonna hopefully, we're gonna be back to normal. So we're gonna see. I'll talk to y'all a little bit later, man. Bye bye. Let's go, let's go. Hey, hey. Beat that thing down like you started a tantrum, my baby. You had some plans with your man, just tell him to cancel, my baby.